September Fayetteville Council of Neighborhoods meeting. Um, introduction of neighborhood representatives. Start with you. Ethel Simpson, University Heights. Aubrey Shepard, uh, Town Branch neighborhood. Don Connor, Ridge School Neighborhood Association. Richard Russell, Jennings, uh, is it Jennings Mill? Jennings South. Plus. <laughs> Jennings Plus. That's what it is. Jennings Plus. Uh, That's what it called. Isn't it? I stand, I stand in for Jennings Plus. Never. Uh, Lacey Anderson, student representative right. from the University of Arkansas. So we have a university seat on. Coordinator Julie McClay, but not coordinator, excuse me. What is your Julie McClay, community outreach coordinator. There you go. And our first order of business is me, Mayor Lionel Jordan. I wanted to bring this, and I want to thank you all for giving me just a little bit of time. I wanted to bring to your attention a very important election we have October the 11th is uh, our, what we call the uh, renewal or, well, that's a little egg shake. Let me change it. Yeah. All right. So that's a lot better. But what we're trying to do is that we ha are, are calling it a rededication of our quality of life in cities. And what we have, if you look at the penny that we're, that we're looking at rededicating for the city, and this is a tax that we pass about every 10 years. We put up for election about every 10 years. And what we've done in the 10 years that we've had this uh, one cent sales tax, it's been going on since 1993, but the last 10 years, I wanted to bring a few things to your attention. First of all, what's involved is about $15.4 million of, of city budgeting. And, and then if you look over here, 60% goes in your general fund. And then about 40% goes in what we call the CIP, Capital Improvements <coughs> Program. And over here, what this basically does is, is your services. And of the services, about 80% of that, of course, is salaries, and about 60% of that is fire and police. It comes to a total of about $9.2 million, or it would be approximately 27.7% of the general fund. So that's a chunk of change. Now over here on the on the forty percent the forty percent of the one cent sales tax in your CIP, that's six point two, and that would this would be in the last ten years we have done one hundred and nine miles of road repair. We have done twenty five miles of sidewalks. We've done 20 miles of trails. It also includes funding for the Boys and Girls Club, a tune of about $250,000 and $50,000 for the Senior Center. You can see what's at stake here. I don't have to go into a lot of detail. So, I wanted to show you this tonight because that's about 100% of whatever we're doing right now would cease to exist. And the CIP, 27.7%. If you look at the amount of employees involved in this, it's, I believe, 148, and 93 of those is fire and police. So basically about two thirds. Well, that, that doesn't just include, I mean, I think it's 50, I have it written down there somewhere. I think it's, I don't have it on this one. It's 93 positions and uh, the other 55 positions is just in parks, prosecuting attorney, district court, city clerk's office, planning, IT, and accounting. So the 93, I think uh, 53 is, um, I may have this backwards, I think is the, is the fire and then, you know, 40 is, is police somewhere along in there. It's a total of about 93 positions. So um, you can see what kind of budget impact this would have. 
people don't seem to recognize that uh, a lot of people talk about cutting government spending. Right. But there's these your are jobs and these are essential well, services. Well, these are, yeah, I'll read, these are services, I mean, essential services. You're talking about shutting down fire stations. You're talking about laying off police officers. That's what this, that's what this could mean. How is the vote worded on the ballot? Is it worded as yes to continue it and no not to? Here we go. The sheet, I believe we've got that correct actual well, wording. Because yeah. sometimes it's kind of confusing. I don't think this is confusing. I think it says a renewal. Oh, I don't have my glasses. To okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's for is the adoption of one percent local sales tax. Now, keep this in mind. This is not a tax increase. Not this a tax increase. Just a renewal. Right. It's a continuation of the of same. Of what thing we already have. Paid. It's the quality. Actually, what you're voting for is your quality of life as a city, right? These are your. This is what keeps us going. Is well, how we say this makes the vote float. We couldn't afford to lose ninety-three fire and police. No, you could not. Huh. It Not just, to mention all your road repair, sidewalks, everything, gone. Boys and Girls Club funding that we put in there, Senior Center funding, all that stuff, gone. gone. We have to make those type of cuts. And that's reality. I'm just giving you the facts. And the Senior Center includes meals on oh, wheels. Yeah, that's right. And meals on wheels is really important to so many people. It's a great point. And I mean, I've, I've been speaking to groups all over the city. Spoke to a group or spoke to Rotary Club today. Um, uh, Western County Democrats Monday. And I've talked to uh, Lions Club. I'm speaking to another Rotary Club. Just any. Uh, I wanted to come here to the Neighborhood Association. What is the general consensus? Good. Good. I think the thing that we need to really realize is that you need to get out and vote because I hear a lot of folks say, "Well, that's going to pass. We always pass that." Folks need to get out and vote, and they need to they need to support what we're trying to do. And it's obviously the only thing on the ballot. Yes, unless they suddenly bring something in. Right now, that's it. But that's it. That's, that's it. That's the only reason to that's go it. to the polls. That's right. So I suggest people should go to the polls. Can y'all put out a PSA on the radio stations or? Well, we're going to be doing that sort of thing. Probably. I didn't know. I didn't know. Right. <laughs> That's the thing, and see, you can go back to your neighborhoods, and you can tell them, folks, we got to get out and vote. We need to support this. Yeah. Because this, I'm telling you, when you start cutting 27 percent out of your general budget, and you start cutting 100 uh, percent of your CIP that you get every year, basically a third of our funding. Pretty much. 15.4 million dollars. Out of the what 90 million dollar budget? Yeah, I think the budget's about 100 and. Oh, 18 to 20, somewhere along there, but a lot of that in your CIP besides this is locked up in your bonds and stuff. Right. It's just, I mean, that's already there. They that's going to happen no matter what. But this would be where the, where the cuts would be. What kind of requirements do you have to have to vote? Like, if students were going to vote, would you have to be, like, I live, like, I have a house in Fayetteville, but I'm from Kansas City. So, like, when you've I, got to be a registered voter. You have to be a registered, have to register voter. here. How how long a better time is too late? Isn't it? Is it too late? I don't. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. 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 see, we've got early voting probably starts next week. Yeah. yeah. Week week before. It probably is um, too late for this one. But we can at least get the word out to students because I didn't know that I needed. Maybe to you can see what kind of cuts we're going to be making here. Yeah. We get a lot of students registered. At the last uh, presidential election right. period, yeah. a lot of those are out of school and gone. But, yeah. but there's so, still some there in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a good number of them that are in. Yes, Rachel. We just don't. You know, this this is a serious vote. I want everybody to get out and vote. I hope that school those school board elections are maybe kind of woke up a few people. But I hope you, so. You have to call vote. <coughs> <coughs> Even if you're the candidate. I hope so. Well, besides getting the word out to the neighborhoods, what should we do? What can we do to help? Well, I love a resolution now that this body. I think we can handle it. Well, that would be a wonderful thing. I, th I would, I would, uh, I make a motion that we uh, support this tax effort to renew 
the existing sales tax for the city of Bethel. Well, well, how it's worded, it's not to renew. It's to to adopt a sales um, one percent local sales and use tax to replace the current. I mean, it's just semantics. It's it is. It is. It's, it's replacing just, exactly the same thing. Just, so, shall I read it exactly as it said? I don't know as long as. I, my motion, Mr. Chairman, is that the uh, Federal Council of Neighborhoods support, or the Council of Neighborhoods supports uh, the uh, voting for adoption of a 1% local sales and use tax within the City of Federal to begin July 1st, 2013 to replace the current 1% local sales and use tax. This replacement tax shall expire on June 30th, 2023. So, so that's your motion. Yes, sir. I'll second. We'll have a vote on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? I think that pretty well passes unanimously. I appreciate that, y'all. May I ask a question, Mayor? Yes. Somebody uh, email me or Facebook message to show up for the press conference today, and I didn't know about it. I think that was the press conference yesterday. They had a press conference yesterday. Okay, now, so. It's a citizens was, group. Uh, I forgot the name of the citizens group now, but they are putting together, you know, folks to get out and, and support them. Have you got yard signs? Uh, I don't know. I know the Chamber of Commerce, not the Chamber of Commerce. I cannot remember this citizens group. I know they leader or one of the head <coughs> people involved in the organizing group. And Justin Tennant's involved. Justin Tennant. I know they got. I don't remember the name either. The, uh, okay, so we we should feel free to call Justin Tennant and see if he's got yard signs or anything else. Absolutely. He's, he has, yeah, he's, he's. And they're going to be up to Farmers Market on Saturday. Okay. Passing stuff out. Okay. I know that they're going to be passing out leaflets and things. I. I I don't know about yard signs because I'm, I'm, you know, that's their group. Yeah. Which I mean, they they, they came out yesterday and there's uh, there's a board of about six six or eight, and uh, I know that there was representation from the senior center was there and the boys and girls club and, and uh, <coughs> because that affects everybody. Right. So, and I'm sure there's representation from the body of the city employees that are interested in this sort of thing. I would say they would, <laughs> they would be very that interested. Would, that would go without saying? You're getting support from the FOP and the IAF? I have support from them. I have support from uh, uh, most of the groups I've talked to is, is given me. Well, good. They have been very supportive. Actually, I've just had a few folks call and say that they were not going to support because they believe in cutting government. So, well, well, when the house uh, is on fire, uh, then you change your mind. Yes, I said that's true. But have, haven't we sort of cut government pretty much all that can be cut right now? I want, to, I want, I want this group to understand that when I came into office, my general fund, which is what we operate the city on in your services, was sitting at thirty-five point eight million dollars. Now it's at thirty-three point eight million dollars. So we've cut two million dollars out of the budget and kept your service level. So we've been very financially responsible here at this city very diligent but when i but when i started you start asking me to cut to the tune of 9.2 million dollars then we're going to get into services fast okay and i really 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 do appreciate y'all's support well understood <laughs> <coughs> and and you have it you have it we're we're wholeheartedly behind it and uh we will make sure and get out the word to our neighborhoods and anybody else that'll listen well, I think can you get word to the students? Yeah, I would really definitely. appreciate that. You're probably get it in the traveler, the student paper. Be wonderful, wonderful. And put it out on the general website if you can, uh, to inform them to get out and vote. And tell their parents to get out. The local kids. Do you want? Uh, does the council neighborhoods want to do a press release tomorrow announcing your resolution? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. If I you can, can get in touch with Joel Walsh or. It to you. Yeah. Yeah. And if you if you'd like me to deliver that to Joel Walsh, I'll be glad to do it. Or if you're going to do it, it makes no difference to me. Mm -hmm. Or our communications person, Lindsley Smith, any of them. <laughs> well, as your staff, as the staff assigned to this group, I think I probably okay to prevent any confusion. Okay. 
no no confusion there that I, I see no problem with that at all we need to we need to get the word out we need to make sure that everybody understands that this is not a change this is not additional taxation this is just replacing what we're already paying and it doesn't hurt that bad so you know we're in good shape i will step into my office and see i think i have the name of the group in my office so i well, okay. I'll be yeah. right back. Yeah, if you can do that, do I will certainly get it to us. We'll move on to something else while you're doing that. Well, if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I did receive that message for the first time this afternoon. And if indeed that was the conference, it was yesterday, it shows you need to use the telephone rather than depend on your email or Facebook account or something. I know they were having some scheduling problems this week. There were a couple rescheduled, so it may have Maybe it was something it may but I was still the two hours later. Yeah. But I'm sure they will have more. I'm sure they will, yes, definitely. I think they just had some trouble getting started. They're gonna, they're gonna press pretty hard. Have they got a funding organization? I'm not we? sure, I'm not sure. Being a city staff, I can't really get I just, too involved in that I just in that didn't, know, didn't know whether whether you knew whether they did or not. Or I'm know. sure they've got something. Um, okay. Justin, I would imagine, would be on top of that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine it's local business people and that sort of thing involved that you would may may not know though. Okay. All right. Well, on to the next thing. We have to vote. We made yes, sir. The name of the group is the Committee for Family. Okay. Thank you all again. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Because they have a website. I don't. Nobody has a I would imagine they've got at least a Facebook page. Yeah, okay. But I, I, if you want, I can investigate that information and send it out to you Thanks. just because it's probably easier for me to find it. Okay, if, if they put it on Facebook and he got it, then he could forward it on to everybody too yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Feel free, Aubrey. Yes, sir. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I. I uh, I want to mention that I didn't realize Mr. John Newman was deceased, and and I called today when I was calling trying to get people to come, and his son told me that. Yeah. Well, you know what? So he died yesterday morning. Really? Oh. Heart attack. Hmm. Well, he didn't even, Never came. Oh. Uh, so <coughs> the funerals tomorrow at 3:30 hmm. at Temple Show, sure. and then this uh, burial at the Fairview Cemetery. Condition. And then okay. it'll be the house at the Nellon Home afterwards at 6 to 9. I'm sorry to hear it. Yes. Large part of Fayetteville just passed away. Large in, supporter in of Fayetteville. In capacity of what, Rotary or? or um, yeah. And several other organizations. I mean, he's kind of great. been a part of a lot of things along yeah. the way. So, you know, you've always heard his name connected in one way or another with something that's good for Fayetteville. Uh -huh. So, you know, have we missed? I'm, I'm quite sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, this order of business we've got here is we have a bylaw amendment vote and we didn't have everything quite the way it was supposed to have been, so we're now going to fix this problem. <laughs> we had changes uh, to the uh, full membership in the section 401 and it, we, we were changing that from just inside the city of Fayetteville to within the planning area of the city of Fayetteville and we had changes to on the meetings for Fayetteville Council of Neighborhoods voting representatives from six to three for a quorum and we had uh, hmm? And that's it. Okay. And we need to have someone bring forth a motion to do these changes to the bylaws of the Fayetteville Council of Neighborhood. I, I, so, I move that we accept the changes in the bylaws as presented in this revision. Okay. I second, second that. All right. So we'll take a vote on that. Anybody in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Good, it passes unanimously. 
that takes care of that little piece of work. And thank you, Julie, for bringing it to our attention that we didn't have it published far enough ahead of time. And uh, Robert's Rules of Order strikes again. Okay. Uh, our next thing that we have to take care of today is the nominating committee for officers, and we're going to have officer elections October 27th. How many members do we need for a nominating? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. Stan, would you like to volunteer to be a member of the nominating committee? Sure. Mr. Shepard, would you? I, I will. How about you? I'm the only one left. We don't want to lay that on Lisa right away. Um, my difficulty is I'll be out of town on the 27th, but I could I could work on this before that okay. if I don't have to be present. Or from Jennings Plus. Okay. So you could step up and... Richard Russell. Well, this is my first visit. I'm not qualified to... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We'd like to help. Okay. okay, so we, we have we have the members of the nominating committee and they can get together and <coughs> Yes. Yeah, give give your email address what well, she's got your email address and yours. Yeah, I've got theirs. Yeah, share it with Julie. Absolutely. Please. And they can make nominations for officers and it'll be voted on at your next meeting. Correct. Thank you very much. Also, calling today, there's some people don't no longer have the same number. They're still around, but their numbers change. So many people go on the cell phones. Yeah, well, that's true. And their old book phone doesn't work on there anymore. So we do need to locate some of those people by personally finding them and getting their numbers. And Just drive around and whistle. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little more than that, but you know, I think we can. I think we can work on that. Uh, as far as the chairman's report goes, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing specific I have right now. I have no, I have no specific thing. We've, we've covered our problems with the sales tax that needs to be dealt with. And, uh, other than that, on pressing issues, I've heard no people calling me up and complaining bitterly about this side of the other that needs to be taken care of here lately. So we're in pretty good shape in that respect. Um, so I guess we'll go right to the neighborhood updates and announcements. What's happening here? Well, uh, we're very excited in University Heights because we've been struggling for many years to have better traffic control on some of our streets, especially streets where children are walking to Leverett School and there are many areas where there aren't any sidewalks. So uh, just this past week we have learned from the city that uh, a sidewalk is going to be constructed along uh, Cleveland oh, good. in that block just uh, to the west of Razorback. Uh -huh. and. Uh, that some kind of traffic calming is probably going to be uh, constructed uh, west of that. Are they going to put a speed table in? I'm not sure. I don't think they have said exactly what they're going to do, <coughs> but um, possibly narrow the street some way, maybe by installing another sidewalk mm -hmm. on that side. And um, we've been working for a long time. Steve Shepard was the president of our association for a while, and he'd started a uh, big project and then uh, Justin Eichmann had continued to work for it and uh, we've been this year uh, with uh, a brand new president, Delora Hughes, we've still uh, been pursuing that and uh, so our, our aldermen, Sarah Lewis and uh, Rhonda Adams have, have really stepped up and helped us get that done. Well, on, on the uh, change in the uh, uh, map for the alderman, are they still going to be your alderman? Yes. Good. Good. Yeah, we'd say so too. I was just, I was just checking. Mr. Shepard. Town Branch neighborhood, uh, of course, uh, lost a very weak effort we made this year to uh, avoid having student apartments put by the National Cemetery. However, 
there will be a meeting, another meeting with the planning commissions coming up. So there will be many steps before the final version of this uh, student apartment complex would go up with its four stories next to the, just across the street from the National Cemetery, which that was tried by the same company in, in uh, still water, Oklahoma, two years, well, skipped a year and came back. They didn't get passed. They got flushed twice. But well, um, even though we have the National Cemetery there, I'm not sure where the, where the place is in, in Stillwater that they wanted to put their apartments, but they're, they're uh, planning department and commission and council <coughs> arrested both times. But uh, we can still modify the parts of the design of it and the spacing to see that uh, the, it does not affect the cemetery so much. And of course, people who live south of there and west of there will be affected by traffic. And uh, where is that located? It's do you, do you know where? Uh, where it the National Cemetery is. South, okay. South, if you go to Government Avenue between Brenda's Bigger Burger on, on Martin Luther King at a red light at Hill Avenue, the Hill Place apartments are right there. Uh -huh. And then just, this okay. would be to the southeast of the, about just across the cemetery. So um, is it there would the, be another complex. Is there. it the university's uh, or is it's, it just uh, outside? It's a company from North Carolina, I believe. Yeah, are they the same who built Hill Place? It's no, the same, no, it's company? a different, they're competitors. But uh, Hill Place finally appears to be full. They uh, have, uh, there's people with children living there and different things. It's not just students or so forth. But uh, the first year they were open, they, they had uh, a lot of empty space. So it's not a desperate need to have this building. But there are other there's another project coming in South Bayville for another complex. It's on the on the radar of the planners. So the one by the cemetery is just gotta be the worst possible yes, place. I was just wondering wasn't there somebody that was gonna try to get extra land for the National Cemetery around there? Yes, there is a, a um, they're trying to there's a fundraising group called the, the uh, Regional National Cemetery Improvement Corporation. Now they have acquired some already. Over they? the years, for, since uh, 1984, they were acquired several acres, quite a few lots, but it's over on Hill Avenue, and each time they buy one of those lots, a, a house is torn down. I thought it was the where the uh, uh, sale barn used to be, or no, no, they have not the made, they have not had enough money at one time to buy all that property. So oh, they make an offer on it. So they did, yeah, they, they've been focused on just buying a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. And the sale barn, because of its, well, think about when you're up there, if you go to the National Cemetery, if you've got a, a relative buried there or a friend or just go up there and visit on a, on a Memorial Day or something, but, or any time, you can go at night and see what a view of the city it is. It's one of the, the, you know, everything looks great around it. You can see downtown, you can see part of the university, you can see the, uh, the senior center to the east on a hilltop. You can see Rocher Heights Hill on the other way. Um, it's not somewhere for multi-family housing or multi, uh, whatever the appropriate word is for apartments, and not a place for parties. Last night, I lived next to the Hill Place, and it was way after midnight, parties were going on up there, and I'm not even sure why on, what was that, Wednesday night? Why were there parties? <coughs> why were kids out, <coughs> out on their balconies at 2.30 and 3 in the morning? And uh, when I went to college, they didn't even allow alcohol to be sold in the city where the college was situated, and you couldn't have, you would, be kicked out of school if you brought it into the city. But uh, it seemed to be a lot of it at the Hill Place last time. So that, that's not appropriate, that's a national cemetery. Is the, so 
if the land was going to expand, they would, if we had, if the city had enough money, they would take out the sale barn? Is that what you're saying? Well, the sale barn has been closed. The, the owner two years ago closed it on the expectation that it would be uh, rezoned for rezoned apartments. The, apartments. the city did not rezone it for apartments at that time, but now the council has allowed that to pass. Is a do they have like an idea of how much it would cost? Well, probably a couple of million dollars. There, nobody that I know has ever had a firm figure on what they'll be paying for it. So I don't know what Bar Bartholomew Trust wants for that. Uh, and the and North Carolina heard. company doesn't want the sale barn, barn property. They want no, no, no. The sale they, barn. they want the sale barn property. They, they do want the sale. Yeah. That's oh. what they're, bu they're buying. Oh, they I may have already completed the sale. Of, um, oh, oh, okay. It's on the east side. Oh. The Hill Place apartments that exist are on the yeah. north. So they don't want to west. go further west. They want to go east. Well, it's they're north. just getting a big 12 acre east. piece of property. Yeah, sorry, I don't understand. It's just 12 acres that they can buy. Yeah. And uh, they do have the money. So, but, you know, it's not about the students, it's about the buildings themselves, really. I mean, well, then the, any, they can any kind of structure. Uh, overlook the beautiful cemetery. They can the overlook the cemetery the and they'll be able to throw a bottle from the balcony yeah, into yeah. the cemetery if there's a balcony out there. I mean, it's, it's a time in life when people, well, the people that go visit the cemetery are visiting loved ones and they want to quiet and they want that communication that they feel with their loved one as opposed to a bunch of music or activity. And it never is locked up, so people can go over there and party if they so chose. There's no, you'd have to call the police and say, come, there's something terrible going on in the National Cemetery. I, I do believe the police put a stop to that in a heartbeat. Well, I, I believe they would, oh. but you would, yeah. somebody would have to do that. And Who the, rezoned it, finally rezoned it? The, the, the council city. allowed it to the be, city. yes. Yeah. Uh, they was city. requested by the property owner. Right. The city didn't just do it arbitrarily. Right. No, no, they, no, no, no. The city didn't do it on they purpose. Did. Right. They, right. They, filed for, they filed through planning, and they went through all the motions, and they got it rezoned. And no one from... Um, no one tried to. Uh, well, yes, people did try. Tried. I mean, this yeah. is all. But the planning past. commission. Oh, right. Planning it's, commission you know, and it's city it's council. Kind of a dead issue. If it's well, like that. things can change. Well, sometimes. Well, I want to uh, ask a question about this other. You mentioned uh, another uh, development is sort of in the wind, mm -hmm. a similar student housing. Because I got a phone call from. Uh, what sounded like a very clean shaven young man. But um yeah, right. And uh, he said he was conducting a, a a survey and he needed to ask me two questions. And the first one was whether uh whether I thought the city of Fayetteville should support uh, the uh, development of the business community or pr pr promote economic development or something like that. And so, of course, I said yes. And then he started in on would I, uh, what would I think about an upscale student housing development uh, and it would this, that, and the other, and it would provide this many construction jobs and this many uh, continuing jobs and so forth and would provide this amount of increase in the uh, tax base of the city of Fayetteville. And um, so I told him that I would need to know a lot more about this project before I would support it. And he thanked me very courteously for my time, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but Didn't it, give you any more information. Just obviously a yeah. survey of somebody fishing, trying to... Have you stopped being your wife kind of thing? Yeah. You, know, you ask, you say yes and then you're in trouble. You're stuck. <laughs> My husband got a call last night, uh, the, the same thing. Yeah. And he said, well, how much would it cost? And uh -huh. not even thank you very much. Yeah. So someone's trying to get data. For well, they, yeah, they'd like to be able so, to show that, you know, thousands of people in Fayetteville support this project. Yeah. Sight unseen. Well, I, I think it would be interesting to find out what the actual rental occupancy rate is right now. How many apartment. rentals are actually empty? 
how much of a need yeah. there is. Yeah, and, and how many rentals in the university area well, if are it was, available. If it was of scale, I think they assume maybe nowadays that students have more money, but I know even people at Hill Place will leave because it's way too expensive. That's yeah. my thought, too, that um, yeah. We don't really need any more upscale student no, housing. If anything, we have enough upscale students as it is. Like affordable housing. Yeah, and across the board for students and otherwise. Especially with the influx of freshmen, there are no only freshmen can live on campus. So that means all other, you know, eleven thousand students are living off campus. And obviously not all of them are gonna be able to afford five hundred dollars in rent. And that's not including utilities or you know, cable or internet or anything. Upstairs would be more than that. Oh yeah, easily. The Hill Place is something like eight hundred dollars a month to have your own separate yeah. one bedroom. Is that right? Yeah, it's some. I mean, uh, five hundred is if you have like four, four, four including yourself, so three other roommates. So right. I would assume so it would be something. Yeah. yeah. And the eco apartments. Are you familiar with the eco? Yeah. They're seven hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and it's all inclusive. Everything. Utilities, everything. Um, that's still a chunk. Isn't computer. Yeah, yeah. but you know that's but still something the size of a dorm room too. It's a very so. small. Yeah, it's very size. small. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I like the days when people lived in the old houses, rented from a nice lady who. Uh, well, I there like are no teacher, more nice ladies. <laughs> and, uh, but there's some real bad. <laughs> there's some real bad. I was looking for places for my son, and there's some pits that are <coughs> got to be fire hazards and utilities you're just paying through the nose in winter and summer for utility they to me they're tear downs and that's what your neighborhood associations help clean up and take care of and hopefully yes if they can yes they can that's true. well i was just when you were talking about i know we're probably not supposed to get into this but you know i'm talking about rental apartments i mean they put so many in that it's put uh, the people with houses in a real bind. I mean, I've had a hard time renting my houses because there are so many apartments. And uh, do you rent houses out to students? We I have a. Yes. Have you ever gone on the OCC website and put off them up there? Connection. OCC is off campus connection. It's a no. I it's rent. a website. That's how I found <coughs> my where I live right now, but. It's a really good way to, like, because that's where students go. Because it's it's hard to drive around, you know. And like, I would drive around and try and like take a picture while I'm like parked outside to get like a phone number. And I, oh, like students go on there and it has a list of all the rental properties and stuff like I that. I usually use Craigslist, and I and I uh, I just went over there. I went online just the other day and. There were a lot of three bedroom houses in Fayetteville. There weren't as many two bedrooms, but um, I'm having, I've got two, I've got two now that are open. I can, and, uh, and one's been open for months. I know, and if, so. if you uh, do it through the university and then everything's like certified and students, I think would be more apt to maybe go that route than Craigslist. Cause I know when I looked on Craigslist, you never know on Craigslist. So it might just, be worth a try, I bet. I mean, I know, especially in the spring, all those freshmen are going to be moving out, so they're going to need places to stay. Are they only does, allowed to, I mean, only obliged to live on campus for that first semester? Uh, first year. The first year. Oh. Unless they're officially. Moving. The end of spring, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but going through the off campus connection, it also kind of helps build that relationship between. The uh, community members, the property owners, and the students. Um, so when there are issues, hopefully the conversation can be a lot more um, real. Yeah, personally. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, it will also help. They, the the um, OCC can help the students prepare for what's going to be expected of them when they're living in the community. So I think the more property owners thing. that go through them, that that'll just help. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing she's that. quite right about because the OCC they they do give people information about how to behave when you move into a neighborhood. 
uh, you know, when, when you're expected to put out your trash, you know, whether you can have parties, you know, parking on the streets, things like that. They, they try to make sure that the people have that information so they've got a guideline and uh, as well as the stuff that the Council of Neighborhoods puts out, you know, where we've got uh, on the website, we've got all the listings of who to contact for this, that, and the other. Uh, so, you know, it, it all works hand in hand to make the students good neighbors uh, because they're informed about how to become good neighbors. And most of them really do want to be. Uh, and I, I, think it, I think it's a really good thing because it helps solidify the community with the university. Mm -hmm. well, and, and they'll work with like the people at the OCC, they'll work not only with the students, but they'll work with you as well. So like if there was a discrepancy, they'll try and resolve it instead of it being like, you know, a 20 year old versus an adult, you know, that way it kind of smooths everything over and it's not. You have a built in mediator. Yes, exactly. Do you know if, um, if the OCC, when they describe a property, do you know whether they, um, go into the question of how many can legitimately <coughs> occupy uh, a house in a single uh, family they do, don't they? neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They I do haven't. like rooms, whether you can have pets or no pets. Because uh -huh. um, of course in our neighborhood west of the stadium, we, we have this pressing issue all the time of over occupancy and of houses that are built uh, to be rooming or extensions of fraternity houses or that. That sort of thing, you know, and uh, we're just always uh, watching and agitating and grieving. Yeah, and, and our, all of our neighborhoods <coughs> have the same problem. You know, we'll we'll have somebody that rents out a house, and they'll have a three-bedroom house, and they'll have twelve people living there. Yeah, you know, and it's you know they have very little frat parties and carry it on. And, you know, that sort of thing. And sometimes the students aren't even aware that that limitation. Or I shouldn't in the past. Sometimes students haven't been aware that they were violating that uh, that ordinance. But we've had fairly good results in our neighborhood association with uh, passing out information to them. We give them the the information that we've got on the website. Plus, we have a letter that we write up that you know tells them some of the good neighbor things you know to do right. and who to get in touch with if they got problems in their neighborhood and. That sort of thing, and it and it and it does make a difference because they do realize that there are people living there that are, you know, got kids. They're going to work. You know, they don't want to they don't want to be part of the college scene in their own neighborhood. You know, bring it down to the university if you're going to do that. That's fine, but you know, let's try to not do it where you got people that you know work for a living. <laughs> and I think another thing. I mean, if students weren't aware, which I feel like hopefully they would be, but that might be something where like the landlord or something need to step in because I don't know if like well, see, the landlord is usually the one who is renting the house to twelve students. Yeah, right? and they don't care. Yeah. Yeah. As long as they get their some money. sometimes it's yeah. they, they may don't not know. know. They I may not know. I had some people move in. Mm -hmm. I had two guys move in, and then later I found out two more were in there. Yeah. Yeah. They were just basically using a flop house. Mm -hmm. you know? Running. And then some of them are absent owners, and you know they they live in Texas, and they've got a house here that they bought when their kids were in the university, and all they want to do is rent it. As long as they got money coming in, they really don't care. And we do get in touch with those owners on occasion, and <clears throat> ask them to straighten out the problem, and usually it gets fixed. Mm -hmm. You know, because they really don't want any trouble with the city and they don't want trouble with the neighborhood around them as a general rule. I think one big area of misunderstanding I think that happens um, that's hard to articulate, and I know this from personal experience because we have students that rent right next to us, and of course, we you expect have sorority halls right behind we have you. Two sorority yeah. houses right behind us, so and we expect yeah. it. Um, but the house that rents next to us is, I believe, a four bedroom. And they rent to four people, which is fine. And it actually is zoned multi-family, but everybody else around is single family. That's not a problem. It becomes an issue when all of them have their boyfriend or girlfriend stay over. So now you have eight people. And no, they're not living there. And I think that may be a big uh, thing that a lot of 
college students or younger people may not think about. You know, it doesn't occur to them. That, yes, they're visiting every night, so it may not, they're not living there, but it feels like they are to your neighbors. If they and so maybe have they're, a car. And yeah. there may be a way, we may to find a way to kind of articulate that. Yeah, and, and they usually do all have a car, Robert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, know. I never thought about that, so I think that's definitely a valid point that we could bring up for sure. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, how do you find out if there is a neighborhood organization within Maine? It's on the accessfayetteville.org website. Or I can tell you. <laughs> or she can tell you. Just get in touch with Julie McQuaid here. I mean, when there's a lot of, when there are a lot of students in, mm -hmm. in an area, I mean, are, are there? Sometimes there are, sometimes there aren't. Depends. Yeah. Uh, the two student ghettos just uh, north of the university, uh, so from the railroad tracks, from um, Greg to Leverett, and from Arkansas, from Maple all the way up to uh, North Street, mm -hmm. and then the student ghetto uh, from Center Street South um, to Government, um, I guess, or not Government to Sixth Street. Uh -huh. um, are the are are there neighborhood associations there? I, I don't. What would they? Sounds like Jennings Plus falls in that one. Well, you're talking about on the east, north side of the campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jennings Plus, Town Mountain South, it's in part of that. Uh, no, those are on the south side of the oh, Well, she was talking about two different. Oh, uh, were you yeah, one the one on the south side of the yeah, the one, one is south of Center Street, where Treadwell yeah. and, um, oh, okay. and the Duck Pond Department. Duck Pond is south of that. There is one um, that is, it sounds like starting, getting ready to get started again, that had been active years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and Michael Lawley. He has been oh, trying okay. to get it going good, again. Good, um, What's the name? Putnam edition. Oh, Putnam. Oh, oh, oh. And the other one might be close to the area that Susan, she used to be one of your officers. Uh, she was the representative for many years and they just haven't had a great replacement. Oh, I don't know who you're talking about. I just can't remember her name. Shame on me, I saw her at the Botanical Garden and she told me to tell all of you hello from her, and I forgot her last name. Um, but it was the, uh, the three streets. There's Douglas, um, uh, it goes all the way to Leverett Street. Vander Vettner. Well, Vander Vettner's a little, not a little east, east, but it's between the railroad tracks. It's just west yeah. of the railroad yeah. tracks. I think that neighborhood is actually south of where, where her it might neighborhood be. association started. It might started. be just a little south of that. Yeah. So I don't think there really is one right now. Um, Wilson Park um, Neighborhood Association bumps up to the edge yeah. of that, but they are not active right now. Uh, I'm. No, are we, we are not. Okay. We are. We are. Because I'm in your neighborhood. I know you are. <laughs> no, we we don't have anyone who's. who's you used to have Mark Kenyon, who's now. Uh, yeah, Mark's room is a Steve well, Frankenberger. <laughs> we're trying. We're going to try and I guess we can segue into reassemble the, it. Well, we, you know, we've got remember, We haven't had a, a potluck. We have our fall and spring potlucks, and we've um, we're we're trying to get one a fall potluck going um, uh, in October. We haven't had a potluck in two years. In two years, and people are starting to say, "Hey, well, you know." What happened? All right. Everyone's busy. No one's willing to. Um, and there's been lots of movement, lots of people, mm -hmm. new people, and all. But um, it takes energy. <laughs> Get it put together. <laughs> well, I've lived. I've lived out on off of Mission mm -hmm. since 2002, and I never heard of any neighborhood. Where off of Mission? <laughs> yeah. Ramsey, right across from Root School. Nothing. Across the route, good. Across, Other side. Right. Um, North of route. Not Mount Sequoia. How yeah. close to Winwood? Um, that's on down. That's okay. the, because there was one within so within a, a couple there's blocks. There's Jordan Winwood, and Ramsey. They, that was kind of the center of that neighborhood Ramsey, association. Ramsey's almost across. From, it's across yeah. from there. There's Charlie, Ramsey, yeah. Jordan, and Ranch. Across the street. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't believe there's one in your area right now. That's why I'm never feeling yeah. it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Root School Neighborhood Association is <laughs> right across the street from me. Right. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. I think there had been, but it um, went inactive about four years ago. Uh, 
maybe you're a candidate. Yes, yeah. you, you should, <laughs> you should see about re reactivating. Well, you know, it's it's communication. It's, you know, when I, like I said, I didn't hear any. I've been there since 2002, and I was wondering if there was something that I missed. That Start pulling your neighbors and see if you can get an organization put together. I'll tell you, our neighborhood discussion list, our listserv, is invaluable. We, we just are on it all the time, and people hear something or they you know we've heard gunshots in the neighborhood one morning and everybody's on the list there finding out about that so who maintains that for you sorry oh uh, well that it's on the university uh server you've got several of your uh, neighborhood members that are employed at the university yeah <laughs> and a lot of them are retired from it so there are several free services out there we have for a list google, serve. A google mm -hmm. um, google provides actually a lot of google free group free tools now yeah. that are very easy to use. And I'd be willing to help any neighborhood set up something like that because I do quite a bit of that type of work. Yeah, so Google if you have great. people that are interested, I can help. Uh, I guess on to uh, the rest of the neighborhood yeah. updates. Ridge School Neighborhood Association, we've been enmeshed in Ruskin Heights once more. Uh, we have had several meetings with the potential developers and the bank and what have you that own that. And uh, we've come to a pretty fair compromise with them. And uh, it's going before the city council for the third reading next Tuesday. And uh, it will probably be approved in its current form the way, the way it's written up now. And we, we've had a, a lot better response and dealing with it and the neighbors are not in total upheaval anymore so we're in pretty good shape there Stan. Well it's been pretty quiet over our head we've got uh, uh, one new resident that uh, is uh, <coughs> going by the nickname Thumper right now uh, due to the subwoofer in his car but, uh, <laughs> you know that's, that's all we got to complain about and we're doing okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I didn't come prepared. I should go back and do some research and talk to some folks. So I've seen a lot of change in the neighborhood around where I live. I'm fairly close in under the hill. I'm pretty close to B&B Barbecue down there. Mm -hmm. but, uh, around Block Street and yeah. there. You know, it's on the fourth in South College. So it's interesting that there's been a bit of... Uh, of construction down through there. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, lots that aren't currently in use or are of interest. I've got some uh, little infill. I've got some. Uh, there are some incendiary issues that cooled off whenever the weather cooled off a little bit. Mostly uh, around the issues of dogs. Lots and lots of dogs and the things dogs like to do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nothing new about that. I remember the city used to have a little one sheet publication that was named Thy Neighbor's Dog. And it had some guidelines for, for giving along. We, we had lots and lots of dogs in that yard. During the real high heat, it got pretty terrible. Due process is pretty uh, slow. But as far as reporting on the neighborhood association, I'll have to go do my homework. Okay. Maybe do better next month. We'll let the university off this time there. <laughs> Actually, I've been talking to her for a couple of months. She might want to say something. Go for it. Oh, uh, I mean, we just want to be able to, you know, have a better relationship with Fayetteville. Really, that's my position on student government. Just was created to, you know, help further that relationship so we're really trying you know to make a difference and I know there are some especially like Hill Place where there's more students congregated in one area there's going to be more issues but I think the majority of students really do want to be good neighbors and aren't up at all hours of the night studying so if we could just even you know try and make a little bit of difference that's what we're here for so any suggestions y'all have I mean I would gladly listen but well, don't beat her up. 
be nice. <laughs> but you can be honest too. Yeah. I don't want any feedback. Well, our last university representative, he, he did a very good job of uh, trying to put things together. And uh, we were hoping we'd get a new university <coughs> representative. It's been a while. And uh, so we're, we're proud to have you here. And, uh, you know, I know through the, through the website, since uh, all the students are connected now, uh, they, uh, you guys have a, a pretty good ability to be able to disseminate information. So, you know, get together with Julie and she can give you lots of information to disseminate, uh, as well as uh, asking about the sales tax vote. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll definitely get the student body out to vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, it doesn't cost them much and it will keep our police and fire in business. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people just, I know, I'm one of them. I didn't realize I had to register here, which I guess I should have realized because I had to register in Kansas to vote too. But I think, I mean, even just getting that out there to where students will register <coughs> if something like this were to come up in the future. Yeah. We at least have that option to get that information. I mean, there. come November, there'll be, uh, you know, there'll be more elections come up. We have all the elections coming up and that sort of thing. There's, you know, there's all sorts of, uh, all sorts of city issues that hit, you know, and you want to make sure that the people that are representing your part of the community, which is more too, uh, with the city are doing their job for you. And or most of them are war two, some of them is war one. But you know, you gotta you gotta make sure that those those guys are telling about what you feel. You know what you, what you as a student body feel. So you know that you want them to vote in your best interest as well as the rest of us. So good, great stuff. Do you have a neighborhood update down there since you have no neighborhood association yet? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no! I'm looking at something else. Okay. <laughs> Uh, then, uh, I do have a couple of minutes. Okay, I was going to ask about whether we had any uh, suggestions for next month's agenda. Yes. Well, you will have the officer elections. Right. That's already on the agenda. It would be nice if we could <coughs> put Beauty Mark on the agenda yes. in some capacity. If you would, over this next yeah. few I'll, weeks, contact I'll whoever you need to contact about that. Beauty, beauty mark award. Um, and I also wanted to remind everybody that neighborhood registration renewals are due in, in October. October. Some I have not gotten in three years. Some from neighborhoods in this room. So, yes. <laughs> please. I think, I think we know. Those. That's why a lot of those phone numbers were no longer valid. Um, you know, I can't keep them informed if I don't have current contact information. Was there something in here on, on renewal? Yes. I think I read. Um, yeah, it's, it's in the bylaws. I forget which section, but it is in there. Yeah, yes. Um, and then I also just wanted to mention that we had a trail tour, a uh, mayor's trail tour last Saturday. Mm -hmm. And um, despite the rain and the cold, it was actually pretty successful. And the fact that it was a very long hike. We went from Botanical Garden over to the North Pavilion on Lake Fayetteville. It was 2.8 miles. Huh? We had several people that that made it. Nobody dropped out. No, nobody <laughs> a few people got a ride back. Um, but it was a lot of fun. But we do have our next one scheduled for October 22nd. Okay. And we're going to be starting out probably, this has not been finalized, at the Nadine Bomb Studio or Walton Art Center. But we will be ending up at Wilson Park, where Puppets in the Park is happening uh -huh. that same day. Okay, okay. So it's a Saturday, and it will start at 9 o'clock. And I will have more details about that coming up, but I wanted to make sure to let you guys know about it, because it was a lot of fun. Just make sure they go out on the list, sir. Yep. Good. Anything else, Julie? That's it for me. I think we've got enough on our plate for the agenda for next month. I think so. Uh, well, then I would uh, move for the adjournment for the meeting. I'd love to be adjourned. And my growling stomach seconds there. Okay, well, so does mine. And <laughs> i got to get back down to the Pagnosi Charities booth. So, we adjourn together. We will make a difference.